Hello everybody and welcome into today's video. Today we have something really exciting on the channel because for the first time ever, after just passing around 950 hours of gameplay, I have a fully decorated valley in Disney Dreamlight Valley. So today we're going to go on a tour of the entire valley because I don't know how long I'll be able to keep my entire valley decorated without completely bulldozing one or more biomes and it's hard to say when this will happen again, a fully decorated valley. I'm so excited with everything that we've done with the valley. I've spent a lot of time both personally and on streams here on YouTube decorating the valley with all of you. So I'm so excited to be giving you all this tour of everything that we've accomplished in the one year plus since this game dropped in early access. This is probably going to be a bit of a long one, so grab a snack or a nice beverage and settle in as we take a stroll through Disney Dreamlight Valley. So we are going to start here in the plaza. This is actually one of my favorite places in my valley. It's also one of the places I've had decorated consistently the longest, at least this strip here in the center. I modeled this loosely off of Main Street USA in Walt Disney World. I absolutely adore the Disney parks. I love the feel of these more commercial type buildings, but still having a nice green centerpiece. I used this statue from the Centennial Star Path, which I love. I feel like it's the perfect size. It's wonderfully festive with uh, Mickey, Minnie, and Donald, and I think it really suits this area. I also have Mike and Sully's apartment building, which is one of my favorite house skins. I think it suits builds like this really, really nicely. And of course, Scrooge's and Remy's home and Remy's shop. Now through this gazebo here, we have a square that's currently decorated with an autumnal theme. This area frequently has just a couple topiary squares from the Beauty and the Beast collection, but when we are in a seasonal or celebratory era in the valley, I take those out and I replace them with some seasonally appropriate decorations. So we just have a very small, concise, little festive fall market area over here. My idea for the plaza was to keep everything pretty open, at least compared to how I usually decorate. I wanted lots of areas for seating. I wanted a place that just looked like a communal hangout spot, kind of like a suburban, I don't know, square with shops and restaurants. We have an outdoor seating area for Remy here. I really just wanted it to feel like a place where the community could come together, have a little bit of a stroll, have a sit down, relax, and enjoy some nice views in the valley. So that's what also brought us this giant Mickey fountain. I love this fountain, but it's very large and I sometimes struggle to know what to do with it, but I surrounded it with these bushes. Eventually, I want to put the partner statue here if and when we get it, um, but again, this is an area that just has a little bench where we can take a seat, relax, and look at this beautiful fountain. Moving to the other side of the plaza, this side is a little bit busier. We have a nice gazebo covered path that kind of stretches through this half of the plaza. To the left here, we have another fountain. I'm a big fan of the fountains in this game, honestly. And a couple of picnic tables where people could bring a lunch, sit right in view of the dream castle and have a nice meal, I guess. <laughs> I really enjoyed using these fountain tiles in the plaza. I think it helps to bring a sense of cohesion between the sides of the plaza, and it's also just a really fun feature. So this path continues around. To the right here, we have the backyard area for Remy's house, which I interpreted as a sort of apartment building. I used to live in an apartment building that looked 
not completely dissimilar to this and even though it was really nice on the outside it was a very old building and on the inside it wasn't quite so nice a lot of college students lived there so the patios and balconies all had this sort of pieced together furniture so i wanted to sort of replicate that look and we don't have grills in game currently so i just used a stove to signify a little cookout area I have a medium-sized chest and a house chest, which I include in every biome to help with my storage management. And since we don't have a goofy stall here where I tend to put them, I just plopped them in this backyard here. Then continuing around this way, we have another sort of centerpiece with Mickey, Minnie, and Donald in this statue. And I included some more natural looking trees as opposed to the manicured plaza trees here. But I wanted to keep the plaza more manicured, but I did allow myself to have this little square where I could frame the statue and the bushes with these trees. Continuing around here, we have just another little bench seating area in the back of Mike and Sully's apartment. I used multiple recycling bins here from the Star Path, the Disney Park Star Path. I definitely think they suit this build. And one of the best views in the valley, I think, is actually right here in this little park bench seating area. It perfectly overlooks the meadow. You can see pretty much the entire thing. And a lot of villagers actually do come here and sit pretty frequently. I think it's super peaceful. So moving into the meadow, we have the well in the center, surrounded by some trees, lots of bushes. For the most part, I tried to keep the meadow fairly flat and open, so there's a lot of visibility from one end to the other, but I did want the area around the well to feel really lush and vibrant. I usually like to do that with my wells. I feel like they're kind of an area where magic really presents itself in the valley, so I, I try to keep them very um, lush, very beautiful, and give them a moment where they can really shine. Oh, hello, Vanessa. So moving to this left side of the plaza, we have my main house. I have a yellow and green theme going on in my meadow, which was loosely inspired by Savannah over at my day old tea, but since we had the yellow player home for such a long time, I decided to use the pink version of this house just for a little change, a little pop of color. I really love these cherry blossom trees that we got from one of the turning red sets in the premium shop, so I used a couple of those. And in my side yard here, I have a couple of things that represent me, my love for books and hot beverages. So we have this coffee cart here. And of course, one of my favorite items in game is the painting table. So I had to put one out here, both so I had an easy place to craft and also to just celebrate when I actually got it. So continuing around the meadow, from here we get a little sneak peek of Ariel's palace on the beach. I think the meadow has really fun transition points into the other biome, so I tried to highlight those and make sure you have a really nice view from there. Moving this way, we have just a small little picnic bench set up where we can look out over the beach. And then we're moving into Fairy Godmother's territory. Here I have a pumpkin patch. I currently have about 75 pumpkins here, which is enough for me for now. <laughs> and a fairy godmother's house. I think it looks beautiful in the meadow. I love these benches that we got in that update. The sparkles that come off of them look particularly magical. So I use them quite liberally around the valley, but I obviously had to use them in front of fairy godmother's house. And here you also have a pretty beautiful view of the meadow as well. You can see up into the plaza, and this beautiful pond. Continuing around, you have the exit to Dazzle Beach to the south. 
And further, we have Buzz's RV. I didn't really have any specific ideas for what to do with this. It kind of just ended up here in the meadow, but I think it fits. It looks pretty cute. I just gave him a little radio, some books, a planter box, and he is neighbors with Merlin. So Merlin has a side patio area here with a telescope so he can look up at the stars and see about doing some kind of divination perhaps. Plenty of books, which I think definitely suit Merlin. And a clock tower in the back that I think just matches his home perfectly. And then Completing our circle towards the plaza, here we have our small original Disney characters neighborhood. I love this iron archway. I've used it in quite a few places in my valley and framing it with these trees I think was a perfect transition into this little mini suburb that I have here. We have a picnic blanket here where people can sit and have a little picnic, look out at the rest of the meadow. And here is where Goofy, Mickey, and Minnie live. It's kind of a tight space, but I think it's super cozy. I gave Goofy a crafting table. There's a picnic table here so they can have picnics together. And I just put some foods that I thought looked appetizing and or seasonal. There's a little campfire for if they want to spend their evenings sitting, relaxing by a fire, especially as we're moving into fall and just having, having a chat together. Currently, Mickey's pet is the Gentle Rabbit. I do have Mickey and Minnie in their centennial outfits, so the Gentle Rabbit fits perfectly in with that. And I love the way that this companion house slots perfectly into Mickey's house. It also matches just beautifully. And Minnie has some flowers in front of her house, purple to represent her home and red to represent Mickey's home. And of course I gave them a tiny little community garden. We know that Minnie loves gardening and Mickey seemed to pick it up a little bit while Minnie was gone during the forgetting. So I wanted them to have a space where they could come and do a bit of gardening together. Just grow some crops maybe for them to cook some meals together. And then continuing back towards the stairs, the last thing that we have in the meadow here is Goofy's stall. I put it right by the entrance so it's easy to access. Again, it has a medium chest and a home chest to help with storage. I can easily grab anything that I have from home and anytime I'm doing any foraging, I can just drop it off here in this medium chest. So that is our meadow. Now continuing on to the glade. The glade is the first of our overgrown biomes. The general vibe I was going for this was a sort of dark, but really enchanting purple mystical forest marsh area, I suppose. So we used lots of these willow trees, lots of purples. We have the cherries down here, lots of butterfly flowers. It's definitely a bit crowded. Trees get in the way of visuals sometimes, but I think it's absolutely beautiful and it's pretty enough that I, I put up with the slight inconvenience that comes with foraging here sometimes. Through this archway, I have the purple cottage. I do currently have almost every premium shop house out in the valley right now. The only one I don't have out is the regular version of the Haunted Mansion. So this cottage has a small yard. I keep all of the Glades flowers here in the yard. So if I need them, they're right there. It also has a small campfire and a well. Continuing on from the cabin, we have another archway. I really loved making use of these in the glade, and this leads into a clearing with the magical well. We have a park bench here where we can take a seat.
and look out at this clearing. This is one of the more open areas in the glade right now. Gives us plenty of room to come to the water if we need to fish and easily maneuver around the well. And then this is giving us a little bit of a sneak peek of what's to the right, but through these trees, we just have a cute little sitting area with this lounge pillow set from the Tangled Collection. I just had kind of a random corner of the glade I wasn't initially sure what to do with, and I ended up making that cute little sitting area, and I'm very happy with it. Moving back around to another area of the glade, we have the bridge leading to Mother Gothel's. I wanted this to also feel very mysterious, so again, I used these willows to provide some coverage, kind of masking this. But we walk through, we see the entrance to Mother Gothel's, and there's a bit of a winding area that leads us through. And this leads us into our candy section of the valley. So we have the sweet house right across the bridge, made use of some of these lollipop trees and some of the candy cane ones, even though the candy cane ones have a very large footprint that makes it quite difficult to fit them. But winding around here, we also have Vanellope's home and her candy car. I picture Vanellope's home in this setup kind of like a racing car garage that's set off to the side of this sweet house. And we can continue past the sweet house through this dense foliage. We have this little blanket fort here. One thing that was really important to me, even when I have biomes that are very dense, is that all of the mining spots are accessible, all of the fishing spots are accessible, so even though this is very dense with trees and bushes and foliage, it's still easy enough to get to all of the mining locations. We have a very nice clear path here as well. And we can run all the way down here or go by way of the blanket fort to get to the mining node over there. And then right here, we have a little extra love for this Atlantis-inspired waterfall here by using some of these ruins furniture items and leaving a nice open area for us to come and look at these beautiful, beautiful ruins. Atlantis is easily one of my favorite Disney IPs, so anything in the valley that reminds me of Atlantis, I try to give that area a little bit of extra love if I can. I'm very excited at the prospect of hopefully getting Atlantis in the future. Across the bridge here, we have Ursula's home. She's right here in the water. I think the purple looks really good in the glade, and I did give her a small area with her throne. I currently have Ursula in her Vanessa form, and I do actually see her sitting here sometimes, just out of the blue. And continuing around this little pond, we have some L-shaped benches for seating. I used a lot of purple or these pink lights rather in the glade. I try to go with a different color lighting theme in each biome or stick with one consistent lighting color scheme that I think suits the vibe. So in the evening, the glade lights up very prettily with pink lights. And then here we have the way back to the meadow, but going this way is also where we have Goofy's stall right at the entrance to the meadow, set back into this little natural alcove of sorts. And behind it, easily accessible, I do have the chests for my biome storage. Moving to the beach, let's go by way of the meadow so we can get the full effect of the view. Now, regardless of the way that I feel about Maui as a villager, I think his house is absolutely gorgeous. So I made it kind of the central piece that we see as we walk onto the beach. I wanted the actual sand on this stretch of the beach to be very clear and open so nothing was taken away from the beautiful view of Maui's home. I filled the water with lots of lilies and rocks and reeds to really make it feel even more lush and vibrant. 
and I think it's very, it's very striking. I really like it. To the right, we have Donald and Stitches Holmes. I really want them to be best friends, so they are neighbors. I love how Stitch sits perfectly in this small little bump in next to the glade. I've had his home here, I think since, it has to be since we got him in the game in December. So actually I think this is the oldest area in my valley, the area that I haven't changed in the longest amount of time. I more recently moved Donald to be his neighbor. He's got some rocks on either side of his boat. I like to think about him having to parallel park his houseboat here whenever he comes to dock. He has this sign showing that it is in fact his home. Donald is currently wearing his pirate outfit and the lore that I have, um, the headcanon for my valley, is that Donald wasn't too happy when Prince Eric showed up because Donald feels like he should be the valley's kind of mariner or explorer by way of boat. So since Eric has the finds that he can sell to us um, on his blueprint table, Donald also goes out in search of treasures and usually he just comes back with random little trinkets that he still tries to present or sell from his front yard. But somehow recently Donald managed to come into a collection of very interesting treasure and he is very proudly displaying it here and kind of um, showboating a bit the fact that he has something that Eric hasn't found. This small section of the beach is what I imagine as a more sort of upscale, almost mini resort sort of aspect. We have this beautiful couch where we can sit and get a wonderful view of the water, especially around sunset. It's very, very pretty here. And continuing around, we have these lounge chairs under a gazebo right across from this pool. A nice coconut beverage, some waterfalls behind it. And this is just sort of a, a small little fancy beach area if people want that kind of experience. But then right across the bridge, we have our more touristy kind of typical beach setup. So right to the left here, we have a surfboard rental station with a beach chair for whoever's working this area to sit and relax, sip on their drink, maybe sell a couple coconuts while they're also renting out these surfboards. There's plenty of towels and parasols, a little lifeguard stand, and some beach chairs looking out partially at Eric's boat, but also at the water. We do have a couple of hammocks here if people want to be a little bit more separated from the rest of the beach goers, but still have a nice view of the water, still get those ocean sounds. And right here we have my interpretation of a mini boardwalk or beach market area. So we have a table selling all variety of coconuts from fresh coconuts, coconut water drinks, maybe like a little coconut sorbet or something in these bowls, right next to a couple of ice cream carts. This stall here, I imagine that Eric comes and brings his wares, whatever he finds when he's exploring. That's his boat right there. And of course, we have Goofy's stall here. And a small picnic table where people can bring their treats that they just bought and have a seat and enjoy them. Across the way, still with a nice enough view of the water, though it's partially obstructed by Eric's boat, but not much we can do about that, is Moana's home. I did take a moment to put a couple more ruins items, this leadership shard pedestal here in front of the mystical cave. And Moana has this grassy section with a banquet table, a fire pit, this uh, fire bowl from Maui, just a small table with some shells, and of course her, her boat so she can easily drag it to the water, it's not too far away, and go out fishing. We have the beach house here with a small little picnic set up. 
some beach chairs, books, energy drinks, surfboards, pretty much everything you could possibly need at a little beach house, and it's right on the water. I really wish we could put furniture items on this little side deck. I would love to have put a beach chair on the deck. I think that would be really fun. And on this island here, we have Prince Eric's castle. I was so happy when we were finally able to move the pillar and I had wanted to put Prince Eric's house here for the longest time. I think it's a perfect location. Of course, we have Skull Rock looking very menacing right next to it, but Eric's home still looks prominent, still looks beautiful. I currently have all of my flowers just around here <laughs> to make them easily accessible for me to check if they need to be watered and to grab them if I need to. And this is where I have my well for the biome. Moving on, the last major thing that we have in the beach is Ariel's palace. She's also set far into the water, surrounded by lots of rocks and water lilies and reeds to make it really look like it's set in um, intentionally and it's nice and beautiful around it. And of course, a little crafting table over here. I think it fits the vibe of Ariel and I like to try to have a crafting table in each biome if I can to make it easier to go about questing and whatnot. Here's the other view of Moana's boat, and another view of Ariel's home is right through this entrance. It gives us kind of um, the counterbalance to Maui's home being off in the distance from the other entrance. This one we get Ariel's palace. And this is actually perfect for us to take a swing to the Forest of Valor by way of the plaza. The forest, I also wanted to feel very dense and very much like a forest. I tried to keep it a little bit more um, accessible and navigatable than the glade, and I think I mostly accomplished it. It does feel very dense, but it's pretty easy to get to every single spot in the forest, even the ones that have a lot of bushes and foliage around. To the right, we have the palace. It has a nice, large sort of courtyard area in front of it. I used a lot of these celestial items that we get from leveling our player character. Of course, we have Fairy Godmother's pumpkin carriage right here. I used more of the Fairy Godmother benches. I love the sparkles. I love the gray. Just a nice little flower centerpiece here. And these candelabras from the Beauty and the Beast collection, I think are absolutely gorgeous and stunning. So I put those in front of the castle as well. To the right here, we have a small trail that leads to this clock tower. The palace reminds me of Cinderella's castle and um, the clock is very important in the story of Cinderella. So I wanted to give it a nice, moment in the valley. Moving to the other side of this courtyard area, I have another one of these celestial fireplaces, I think is what it's supposed to be, a path leading back to this mining node, and we can see the small little side yard area. I used the vine walls behind it, but turned it around because I liked this color scheme a little bit better for this area. And this one just has the Mickey fountain here. Goofy, I feel like has been following us a lot today. <laughs> I just noticed that. I think we just were hanging out with him on the beach as well. Okay, continuing through the forest, we have the well to the left across the bridge. We'll get a little bit of a closer look at it soon, but surrounded definitely by a lot of trees, a couple of those arches from the Cinderella collection. And I do have a lot of these pumpkin vine lamps around. I really wanted them to feel like magical flowers that were growing out of the ground in the forest. They give us a lot of illumination. Apart from those lamps, I do have a lot of green 
lights scattered throughout by the trees. I kind of tried to hide them from certain angles, but it gives the forest a beautiful green and yellow glow at night. And this is my small little nod to the kiss the girl scene from The Little Mermaid. I thought this was a really cute thing to just pop into my valley. Here is one of my favorite views of the forest. We have the greenhouse in the distance and a field of wild flowers as we approach the Beauty and the Beast castle. The Beauty and the Beast castle is absolutely stunning, so I tried to keep it fairly simple in front of this. I did use the Beauty and the Beast fountain because it felt only fitting. These large gold items from the Beauty and the Beast collection on top of these fountain tiles and a couple of enchanted roses, of course. Belle and Beast do have a yard off to the side of their home or a little patio. This has a couch and some books. I imagine Belle likes to sit here and read when it's nice outside. And I put a painting table and an easel here because I think maybe Beast is trying to take up painting as a way to spend more time with Belle, both kind of being together but doing their own thing. So maybe Beast kind of uh, clumsily tries to work his way through painting while Belle sits and reads a book and provides a bit of moral support, I think. Moving this way, we see a bit closer this greenhouse from Beast's Questline. It's absolutely gorgeous. The back is stunning as well. I think if or when I redesign my forest, I want to put this in a more central area where you can get a nice view of the stained glass from the opposite side of this item. And I have a couple chests here, one to keep our flowers that we have from other biomes and one to keep the roses in. When I collect these, I can just drop them off there. Continuing on, we have a gazebo with a little picnic setup. That's incredibly cute. And we'll definitely check out the rest of the forest, but let's go back around to the bridge in order to do that. Across the bridge, again, we can see this well. It's very beautiful, definitely set into these trees. To the left, we have a rustic clock tower. I've since forgiven Minnie for everything that she asked of us in order to craft this tower because I realized I actually do love it quite a bit. And I made it kind of the central focus of this little seating area where in theory you can see the dream castle and from this side you can see part of the plaza. However, some of these floating islands are getting in the way, but it's still a nice serene spot in the forest to sit, have a think, and just relax for a little while. Continuing through the forest, winding this way, we have this romantic dining setup moment. Doesn't have a view of the beach, but it is nice and cozy, kind of away from the hustle and the bustle of everything and a beautiful forest setup situation. So I quite enjoy that. To this side of the forest, we have our forest market area. So goofy stall, a couple of veggie and fruit stands. And then here we have a location where I can cook if I need to, but functionally, or I guess in the sense of how I imagine this area, I think if it's kind of a slow day at the market, whoever's manning it can come have a seat, sit by the fire, stay nice and toasty, and still look over all of their wares. And then the last thing in our forest is Elsa's cave, which we can access from both directions here, but we get a little bit of a better view of it from here. I use some of the frozen willows, a couple of the frozen fountains, and a cute little um, snow plushie. 
I wanted to give the cave a moment, but I also wanted to keep the forest feeling like a forest and not give it a huge kind of frozen or wintry inspired area. So that's what we came up with. And speaking of frozen in winter, we're moving into the frosted heights next. So our main prominent feature we see when we come up to the frosted heights is Anna, Kristoff, and Olaf's home with these frozen fountains on either side. I really liked having them framing this castle. I like that I ended up using these bushes to sort of outline these small little courtyard areas with the gem and opal road. And then we have a small seating area, this one looking out over the ledge at the Forest of Valor. This is just a little ice couch moment where we can sit and look out at this wildflower field, the trees, a little bit of Bell and Beast's house. Vanessa, it looks like, is also looking at Bell and Beast's house. It looks like actually she's talking to the Forgotten. I wonder what they're chatting about. I really love having this castle right across the bridge. The bridge makes kind of a nice entry moment for it. So this right hand side of the Frosted Heights is all kind of, again, an enchanted forest sort of feel. I really like that vibe. So I tried to make half at least of a lot of my biomes have a more natural kind of untouched foresty um, foliage feel. So our well is set in these purple trees with these magical willows. Most of the Frosted Heights I have blue lights, but in this area I also have some purple lights. So we have that nice mix of blue and purple illumination at night. Right next door we have a little snow hut home with a couple snowmen kind of hiding out in the trees. Easy access to fishing spots here. And then here we have a bit of a hidden pathway this leads to the right to this mystical cave moment and to another picnic setup. A wintertime picnic might not be quite as fun as a nice beach picnic, but I still think it's a nice cozy corner to come to if people wanted to get away from the hustle and bustle for a little while. Moving on to the rest of the Frosted Heights, we have a nice pathway that leads straight to Woody's Carnival. I really had a hard time deciding what to do with Woody's home, but I'm pretty happy with how it is now. We have a small market area with Goofy stall, a hot cocoa and cookie stand, and of course Kristoff's stall with his sled that he can use to haul all of his finds over to us. A fountain in the back of the frozen palace, and a small side yard with a snowman, a picnic table, and some books. I figure someone in the home has to like reading because they have a larger, a larger library than Belle and Beast, which uh, is saying something. To the right I have a little flower patch where I have all of the flowers from this biome because um, hunting them down in this biome in particular can be a bit tricky. Around this way we have a little seating area with some gazebos and park benches, a small fire where I can cook if I need to. Another clock tower, I did use these quite a bit in my valley. I didn't realize how much I loved them until I noticed that I had used them in almost every biome, but I, I think they just really fit, especially for small areas that you don't really know what to do with. And over here, I have a rainbow field garden area, I suppose. This was something that I actually made for a Dream Snap submission, the rainbow theme challenge. And I left it up because I thought it was really cute, especially at night. It looks nice um, because it lights up like a rainbow. We might do a little mini valley walkthrough at night so we can see how everything looks then. Okay. 
our last two biomes. We have the Sunlit Plateau and the Forgotten Lands. So let's go by way of the plaza. My Sunlit Plateau, I did in a similar way to the Frosted Heights where half is more open and residential and half is more um, of a, in this case, a jungle vibe. So to the right here, I have Wally. He is Scar's um, sort of watcher at this point. Scar is kind of hidden behind Wally and Wally has this nice cute little yard area, a couple plants. A little chair he can have a seat and he can make sure that scar is not getting up to any anything too nefarious i have a nice little sitting area here we have um wally's garden there in the sunlit plateau here we can see a goofy stall i also put a table with some flowers and cacti i imagine that since the madrigals live right here maybe mirabelle is currently growing some flowers hopefully isabella will come in the future and she can be the one that's growing lots of plants and providing them to goofy to also sell with his stall we have the madrigals home with some very colorful lights leading up on this pathway just a little beach chair in front of it and a birdhouse. This path around to the side leads to Wally's garden. We have a crafting station back here. And the Madrigal's yard I left very open. I wanted to have a little section for potting flowers for Isabella. I gave them the banana trees and some beach chairs to sit, a little hammock, but I figured they would probably just gather together in their yard and have a good time, maybe have a little party. So they just want a lot of open area where everyone could kind of hang out and have a chat. And then on the other side of their yard, I do have a more, um, I guess structured setup with a campfire for them to grill out and a table for them to have a nice family meal together. Here I have another little sitting area with a campfire. You can't really see over this ledge very well, but in theory you should be able to see into the Glade of Trust. I really liked using these Lion King partitions here, just around one side and the back of Goofy stall. I think it helps make it seem more like it belongs and uh, it's a cute little setup. This way we move into the jungle part of our sunlit plateau. I used lots and lots of palm trees, lots of bushes, rocks. Um, I usually leave the mushrooms growing here or the, um, the bones if they spawn. I think it looks like it fits right in. We have a pond here and the waterfall item from Nala. We can skirt around the back of the waterfall, but we'll go around this way instead. A path traveling through the side here. This leads back to the sitting area and the well, which is kind of like the introduction to the jungle part of this biome. And then this path leads through the trees and the bushes to Pride Rock, which is tucked back here. Pride Rock has this little watering hole. There is a hammock in the distance, just because. <laughs> and there's a small um, little sitting alcove back here. It's very tucked away. I like making small little tucked away areas. It's an open clearing where some flowers can spawn also, which is nice, but um, it's just a nice little, little alcove. And here we have a picnic table so people can come sit by the pond and have a nice, a nice meal. A nice sit and chat perhaps. And moving on to our final biome, we have the Forgotten Lands, which we will enter from 
over by Wally and Scar. The Forgotten Lands I initially wanted to be more mystical than scary. With our current star path and the items that we have, I did give a little bit of a spooky section, but initially we just walked through these trees. You can see a little bit of a winding path here. I wanted the villagers to feel like they could sort of reclaim the Forgotten Lands, so I made a little painting set up partially for the crafting station, which I wanted to have in the biome. And also because I surrounded this pond with a lot of ferns, I put some water lilies, and I think this is a nice spot in the Forgotten Lands where people can come and actually see the beauty in the Forgotten Lands. There's a little bench over here so people can have a seat. Goofy stall, just kind of sitting by itself here with these chests and a little flower corner to keep all of the flowers in one spot. I did want to recreate a little poetry reading area here in the Forgotten Lands, so I gave us this purple chair, some stools, a bench where people could sit and listen, and plenty of books and candles. So our uh, resident poetry writer in the valley can have a place to come and express their feelings <laughs> with poetry. This continues on towards our pillars, but we get an even better view of the pillars from a different location. So let's go around through this winding path. We have another bench where we can sit and have a look at the pond. And this winds around to this pathway where we have our pillar garden. I previously had all of my pillars set up in the forest. I like keeping them all together because I like to think of it as a sort of memorial in the valley where people can come by and remember everything that we stand for as a valley, everything that we've been through together and um, how far we've come since uh well since i showed up <laughs> but, uh since we started actively fighting the forgetting together and i really like the way that this turned out i want to do a sort of stonehenge situation uh this is the best i could do with the way that we can rotate items currently but i'm i like it here we have the nightmare castle and the well right kind of in the center of the biome the Nightmare Castle has a path leading to a yard with a cauldron, Zero's home. I do have a companion house hidden back here. And uh, the Zero Fox sometimes hides, which actually I think works really well, but sometimes it'll be wandering around here. And I just, uh, I think that's actually perfect because sometimes Zero is just, you know, chilling in his home and sometimes he'll pop out to say hi. If we follow this path around, we have these sort of ruins and pedestals. I feel like something has to happen here because we still can't move these. This is kind of the only thing that's like a furniture item that we can't move. So I'm wondering what that has in store for us. Following this path, we have our little Nightmare Before Christmas inspired area with the spooky archway, the spiral hill, another zero home, and this fountain. Lots of additional pumpkins too. And these haunted tonics. And from the well, I had to work with the small space that I had, so uh, it's a bit crowded, but we have the Before Christmas Haunted Mansion with a Christmas tree, some jack-o'-lanterns, this spiderweb laden tree, and there's a bit of a tattered path leading to the Tower of Terror with the Skeletomobile parked outside, some scraggly bushes, some more um, jack-o'-lanterns, Mickey pumpkins. This leads down into the jungle portion of the Sunlit Plateau, but it also, this leads back towards the pillars. And this is also where we have our treehouse hidden. 
back here in this small little forest. And that is the tour of our valley. It's taken quite a lot of time <laughs> to get the valley fully decorated. We spent a lot of time on stream decorating interiors and exteriors of the valley. Maybe we'll do a bit of an interior tour um, at a different time. But I'm so happy with the way that my valley looks currently. I have to say, I never thought I would actually have the entire thing decorated. I'm a big fan of just bulldozing biomes in my valley whenever it suits me and restarting kind of from scratch. But I'm happy to have a finished product, especially as we're moving into the next phase of Disney Dreamlight Valley. Who knows what's coming? We may have more biomes to decorate, more areas to explore, more items that might make me want to completely redo everything again. But at this moment in time, my valley is complete, which feels very nice to say. So thank you so much for hanging out on this journey. It's been a long one. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, give me a star emoji in the comments to let me know. Let me know what you think of my valley and what's your favorite part in your valley? I'd really like to know that as well. Please give the video a like if you haven't already. It helps the channel so, so much. Subscribe for more Disney Dreamlight Valley content. I have a couple things in the works right now. And hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any videos. And also so you're notified when we go live playing Disney Dreamlight Valley, which we do a lot. Maybe decorating more in the valley or in some of the premium shop houses. Or playing any other cozy games that we play on the channel because we play a lot of really good games. I appreciate you all so much for being here, and until next time, take care of yourselves, and I will see you really soon.
as always, a huge, huge thank you to all of the channel members over here on YouTube. I love the community that we're growing here, and becoming a channel member is such a kind and generous way to support me and the community. So thank you so much. I appreciate it more than I can say. And Brib and Kitty, our Gilded Lily Tear channel members, thank you so much for the additional support and for everything else that you do for the channel. I appreciate you both so, so much. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>